Well, how do you try to build on the momentum that you guys are? I know that you focus in on the each opponent, but three straight wins, you've won five or six. What's the key now in trying to keep uh, and keep this team focused as you go up to Indianapolis? Well, again, we've talked about this before. We've talked about momentum that has to, you know, really start over and build uh, throughout the week as you prepare for the opponent. And I think that there's a level of confidence that can carry over. Like, hey, we're doing this well, and I feel confident about going out there and executing um, this certain job. But as far as momentum, momentum isn't something that, you know, you just show back up on Sunday or whenever you play. You know, that, that's built throughout the week through preparation. You, uh, the Chiefs didn't start a drive beyond their own 25. How important was field position and the success of the defense? Yeah, yeah we right? haven't, you know, I think if you look at the numbers, we haven't been great uh, from that, just from some of the, the turnovers that we've had. But I, I think we're getting back to understanding, you know, how to play on short fields offensively, how to try to force them, um, you know, to drive the ball. You know, obviously what, what Brett did and, you know, the, the ability for us to, to kick touchbacks and, and, and Randy and, and Brett both kick the ball uh, very well. Uh, so that's going to be a huge part of who we are really going forward. And we know that when you get into some of these weather games and as it gets colder and, you know, again, that's a long way off, but, um, you know, those field position um, matchups can be great. You guys had 18 pressures. You only had to blitz one time. Was that kind of the plan going in to be able to consistently drop seven in, in coverage? Well, again, the more that you can put in coverage, uh, the, the, the better, you know, you think that the coverage should be. Um, I, I thought that there was um, a lot of good complimentary calls. I thought that, that we continued to mix it up. I thought the third down was was huge for us. Talking about a team that had converted, you know, 60% of their third downs. Um, and, and guys all did their job. And, um, you know, there were some first and second down pressures. There were some, some things that allowed us to, you know, affect the quarterback. And, and that's what you have to do when you play a great quarterback. Mike, Is that the you. best pressure you've gotten from just your front four in a while without having to do anything extra? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think when you get into those types of games that it's, you know, I mean, they're playing – Pretty early on, they're playing pass to run. I mean, it was a secondary thing. And so that's just kind of how the game went. And it was great. It was great to see. It was great to see those guys have have some success and force the quarterback um, off the spot and get uncomfortable and, and be able to hit them and, and try to affect the throws. And some that he threw out of bounds, some that he threw uh, into the dirt. Um, but I think some of that is a product of the, the game and, and how that it was going at that point in time. Um, but it was, it was really good to see guys you know, winning some of those matchups. It's usually able to do a lot of damage improvisationally once he's on the move. What what prevented that from happening yesterday? Um, I think guys plastered. I think I saw guys, you know, I think David Long was, it was an excellent play to be able to plaster on the receiver down the field, stay on them tight. Um, you know, they volleyballed it up in the air. We talked about they would, they've, had done that and showed some of that on film. If it was just a matter of whether you're going to be running to the football, and Rashawn was running to the football, went up in the air. You know, Rashawn made a play. Um, you know, I think just an understanding of the play never being over when you, when you play some of these quarterbacks that uh, extend plays uh, and then have the arm talent to throw at different areas of the football field, not just sideline throw or you know the same side that he's scrambling to. It's it's just an understanding. That, you know, try to show them over and over. Like the play's never over with some of these guys. Mike, you just mentioned uh, David Long. Um, I, I know you've talked about him a, a few times this season, but what what do you think has enabled him to take like another big uh, step uh, this season? Uh, you know, I think, you know, I'll say that da David. You know, they all. I think they all care. I think we all care. Um, David really wants to to do well. I mean, he really. Um, he could just. You know, I think sometimes looking at guys' eyes and, you know, he really, you know, when he makes a mistake, it, 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 it hurts, it bothers him. You know, he wants to do well. He puts a lot into it. And, um, you know, I think he just continues to, you know, make plays, be productive, play hard, energy. You know, it just a, it would appear that he loves playing football, and I, I know that, you know, and, and that's, that's something that we can view. And I think that you guys would see it the same way. It's never perfect. 
makes mistakes just like everybody else. Um, but he's, you know, he, he plays fast. He triggers. Um, yeah. And so he's he's been doing a nice job in there for us. What makes Danico uh, unique as a player? And then also, what has he brought beyond the field to the locker room? This year? Well, he's... Um, I think he's got a versatility to be able to take on blocks, to to make guys miss. You know, I think when guys probably see him first off, they, they see a bigger bodied player that's probably, you know, they may not think that he's athletic, he's instinctive. You know, he's, he's really when he's won, he's, you know, won from a multiple different moves, whether he's made the guy miss and kind of looked like he was going to take him on and then slip him. Uh, did a nice job the other day, you know, just working a, a simple rip move and, and leaning back into the guy and not getting past the quarterback. Um, you know, we, we ask him to play a lot of different spots and, you know, he's done that for us. And, you know, up last couple of weeks, is that you think that's simply a matter of, of getting past, you know, some of the injury stuff or is there more to it uh, than that? Uh, the more he's out there, the, the more he'll continue to produce, I think. Weren't uh, especially celebratory mood with us after the game yesterday. Does that kind of go back to the the theme? You of guys that? would be the last people I would celebrate with. No offense, Gentry. But I'm just curious after a 24 point win, where that uh, where that comes from? Uh, just trying to stay focused and know that every week is going to be a new challenge, and um, you know that's just kind of sometimes who I am. I'm excited that we win. Our players put a lot into it. I'm happy for them. Uh, but we're we're moving on to to the Colts uh, to try to prepare for for a huge um, division game on the road. I guess that's where my mind goes is just to the next game and, and what what it's going to be and you know how how are we going to prepare and what what's practice going to look like and um, you know but excited and happy for our players or our fans. Um, you know the coaching staff. You know these guys put a lot into it and. Uh, you know, that's just, I guess that's part of my job is to try to just get us focused and ready for the next game. How do you feel Coach Downing is getting just as far as like his comfort level and layering plays and doing those type of things? Uh, it seemed like yesterday was probably his most complete play calling game. I guess my response to that would be uh, as compared to what, Teron? I would say as compared to Arizona. Oh, would you? I mean, we did Arizona. Like, nobody, like, we didn't play well, we didn't coach well. So but that's, that's a good one. Yeah, I mean, again, like we, we could be like as compared to Arizona, like they outcoached us, they outplayed us. That's so long ago. Um, I, you know, we just got into some drives. Again, that's going to be the thing with, with the play calling offensively that, you know, we, we start to compare and contrast. Anytime that we've gotten into drives, um, we begin to, to start to have some complimentary plays and to work some things into to our system. When you go, you know, three or four plays or, or you turn the ball over early, like that's, you know, hopefully we can get into drives and, and get some seven, eight, nine play. You know, we, we talked to the players about getting the first first down and going on the ball. Uh, we did that. I thought that they were, you know, prepared and uh, responded well to that. And that was huge uh, the other day. Um, you know, a lot of things that we'll have to clean up uh, from, a, from a play calling perspective and a playing perspective and an execution perspective. Um, but we, we got off uh, to the start that, that we had hoped for. Challenges playing a team twice in a little over a month, and are there some benefits in, in having you know, familiarity? Well, I think we all, I mean, I think the Colts have familiarity with, with the Titans, and the Titans have familiarity with the Colts. So, um, you know they, they've they've played well. I mean we saw them. You know obviously the game against the Ravens that that they were playing so well in, and uh, last night and, and what they've done since they've played us. So um, they're a football team that's continued to improve, uh, and, and I hope that that we'll continue to do the same thing. Last couple of games, uh, Bills and Chiefs are combined like two for eight in the red zone. What's what's been the key to that success for you guys there? And is it also maybe even a byproduct of the evolution of the defense over the last couple of weeks? Well, those are areas, you know, those scoring areas and, and the, you know, the possession downs on third down that, um, you know, when you're able to do that and you're able to force teams that are used to scoring a bunch of points and, and force them to kick field goals, 
Uh, that probably is, um, you know, somewhat deflating for them. Our guys have, you know, done a nice job. That's a that's credit to the players and and understanding, you know, what's going on each week and being able to take care of the quarterback, you know, down there as he extends plays and making sure that we plaster and. Um, that that is that's going to continue to be huge. Is that if you know teams are going to get it down there, uh, can we force them to to try to make field goals? Who wanted Kinsey to catch that first punt, and and how did he do kind of after that? Well, we would like every returner, you know, whether it's Mason or Marcus or Darrington, Chester. We'd like any returner to try to catch the ball while it's in the air. Now, I don't think it was necessarily a easy thing to do. I mean, it kind of knuckler that hit and. You know, I thought he was playing for the first bounce, and he didn't get it. So, you know, he got out of the way. Um, but he fair caught the other one uh, and the other opportunity that he had. How satisfying has it been for you to see, like, Kevin's play yesterday when he hammers that football out, something that you guys have coached yeah. and emphasized last and, and, again, I think that just looking for opportunities. And, you know, I think Kevin's, you know, played fast and looked for those opportunities and, you know, try to, try to come to the ball and tackle. Um, he, he tried another one. You know, he had another one on their sidelines with the quarterback as well. So th those are what we have to show is the ones that they maybe don't get out, but they're making an attempt. I think those are the ones you have to continue to preach and show them like, hey, there's this is actually better than the one you got out because you now you're aware of it and you're focused on it. So trying to sh continue to show them all those examples. So that was a you know, huge play in the game. Kevin mentioned physicality yesterday. We're talking about how you guys have all these comeback victories. <clears throat> excuse me, in the last few years. Do you think that's on the defensive side of the ball, part of the equation, being more physical than other defenses, and that that pays off? Later? Well, I think that that would be maybe something throughout the entire team, you know, Joe. Where you're not going to knock anybody out in this league, uh, rarely, very rarely, um, in, you know, in the first or second quarter. Um, but maybe that that style or that conditioning or that effort uh, will somehow take a toll uh, and allow us to, to make some of the plays that you need to make down the stretch uh, when the margin is, is so fine. The hooker injury late in the week kind of affect things. How do you think Dane did kind of fill in there, in there for him? Dane did a nice job. Dane moved in the starting role. Uh, Brady Breeze then became active. That was the process. Much of a sense of, uh, of Dylan and uh, finally getting some, some offensive snaps to get a sense of how he fared? I thought he, I thought he did okay. You know I mean? It was good to see him out there and, and good for him to pop in there and actually played both sides, played, played both guard spots. Um, you know, saw him finish a couple times, try to push it a little, pile, push the guys, and um, you know, then had some plays that you know, need to get corrected and some technique things. But it was, um, you know, he was locked in, ready to go. I looked. You know, again, he had a look on his face that he was ready to go in there and play if he needed to, and you know there wasn't any hesitation when, when those guys went down. Is he pretty much out of the picture as tackle outside of extreme circumstances? Well, I don't know that. I just know that he went in and played guard, uh, right guard and left guard yesterday, and you know, we'll see where it is this week. How big of a transition is it from the last two teams, the way they play offensively, to this team now that really wants to run it and plays physical football? Hey, um, you know, that'll be something that, you know, we'll have to concentrate on, um, really focus on their two, you know, two backs. And again, it's not like they don't have other players, just know that, um, you know, Hines has been very productive against us in the past and, and Taylor has a very good ability to run with power and speed. Um, you know, Pittman is certainly continuing to gain a lot of confidence down the field. Um, T.Y. Hilton, you know, Pascal, obviously Wentz has been, you know, really good since the last time we played him. So uh, physical offensive line. Uh, so it's going to be, you know, again, something that we always talk about is now you're, 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 we're focusing on the Colts and their personnel and what their style is and how they want to play the football game, you know, as opposed to, you know, maybe the past two teams that we played. Technically, not even the halfway point, but when you look at the standings with you and the Colts, you have a chance to really take a stranglehold of this division on Sunday. Do you address that with the team or talk about the importance of that, or is it still too early from your, your mind? Well, I mean, I think anytime you play a division opponent, I think you have a chance to do that, right? You can make up a lot of ground, or you can, you know, probably put a little bit of separation in between you and them by, you know, the fact that. 
whether you win it or lose it. So I think that that's always something that we talk about is critical in division games is, you know, the ability to to start, you know, separating yourself if, if you're able to win.